climate chaos, climate crisis, climate catastrophe. What's the most fitting term for what we're seeing unfold across the world these years? Just think of the summer we had behind us, firestorms in the United States of America, rain on the summit of Greenland, and torrential rains, deadly floods across Central Europe. No matter what we call it, the impacts of a changing climate are with us right here, right now, and they're leaving deep wounds on human societies. The good news is that policymakers are finally stepping up and doing something about it. In July this year, the European Commission came forward with their proposals for how to slash greenhouse gas emissions by 55% already by 2030. The proposals outline sweeping changes to the European economy, and in order to deliver what's on the table, we are facing a roaring electric decade. Because in essence, the task is about replacing fossil fuels with clean electricity. Needless to say, electricity will need to be cleaned up as well. And with the current political plan, the decarbonization of the power sector is really going warp speed. Up until a few years ago, the plan was to reach full decarbonization of the power sector somewhere between 2045 and 2050. With the current plans, we're advancing that significantly so that the full decarbonization will now be reached somewhere between 2035 and 2040. In other words, we're basically bringing forward the decarbonization of the sector somewhere between five and 10 years. That's going to put electricity way ahead uh, in the race to zero, and that's good for us, that's an opportunity. But let's be clear, it's also a very big challenge. We're gonna need the help of citizens and local communities to get stuff done, get things built, and we're gonna need the support of policymakers to remove any obstacle in the way. But let's start with some good news. Electricity is already well on the way to decarbonize. 2020 was a historical year where renewables overtook fossil fuels for the first time in history. Weather conditions and lower demand due to the COVID crisis each played their part in creating this watershed moment. But it is really the persistent efforts of the sector to phase out the most polluting plants and replace it by renewables that made this possible in the first place. Taking a look at the share of coal, it was declining faster than expected and no less than 21 member states have announced a full phase out by 2030. Combined, renewables and nuclear covered 65% of power demand in 2020. In other words, almost two thirds of electricity was already carbon neutral last year. That's a lot, much more than any other energy carrier, but in order to go to 2030, we need to go even further. Now, going from 65, to more than 80 may not look like much on a pie chart, but let me tell you, it is quite a big deal. First of all, we need to remember that the overall production of electricity needs to increase since we're powering bigger shares of the economy. By 2030, we need to increase the overall production by more than a quarter compared to today. And since we're phasing out fossil fuels, we need to increase the share of renewables by almost 100%. And mind you, that's 100% compared to today, where a big part of renewables is hydro and biomass, both of which are challenging to build out. That means that solar needs to double, and the same goes for wind. In order to ensure security of supply, we need a fleet of dispatchable plants. Of course, they will need to be low or zero carbon as well, but we also need a massive build out of storage. Look at the amount of batteries we'll need by 2030. And this little part on top, that's pumped hydro. Now, that can look small on these bar charts, but the truth is we're talking about a build out of somewhere between 50 and 60 major artificial lakes in order to deliver this in just nine and a half years. In order for this build out to happen, we need to see massive investments flow. Just for the generation part, we're looking at an estimate of 75 billion euros per year, every year until 2030. Add on top of that the storage I was mentioning, and then we come to the grids, because we also need modernized reinforced grids to connect all this new capacity. 
Your electric estimates that we need some 400 billion euros of investments just for the distribution grids. And in order for all these investments to flow, it's absolutely critical that it is attractive for the investors to invest in the sector. Because this world is not short of money. There's plenty of investors out there looking for bankable projects. It's all about whether the business case is there, whether there's a return on their investments. And in order for investors to look to our sector, we need to be sure, first of all, that governments don't intervene randomly in the market and make changes all of a sudden. Secondly, we need long-term investment signals. These assets stand on the ground anywhere between 20 and 40, perhaps even 50 years, and the investors need to know that they actually get a return all the way through. And the lack of investment signals, long-term investment signals, is actually part of the reason why storage is not ticking off at the speed and the scale we need today. Another critical issue is permitting. So the procedures by which you actually obtain a permission to build a new wind turbine, a solar farm, or a grid line. And this may very well become the single biggest obstacle to actually achieving the 2030 targets. It's very simple. Ambition requires permission. If I have the ambition to run a marathon, that's great. If I don't get the permission to actually run, I'm not going anywhere. This is all the time we have between 2020 and 2030. We're already here, coming towards the end of 2021. Now the standard project takes somewhere between four and six years to actually get the permit, and sometimes even longer. It's very clear that the industry will be left with very little time to build all this new capacity unless we do something about this. That's gonna create frustration, and ultimately there's a risk of missing the target. And we need to deliver on the targets because we need the additional electricity to replace fossil fuels in transport, in buildings, and in industry. According to our estimates, electricity would need to cover at least a third of total final energy consumption by 2030. Today, it's only 23%, so the increase is very steep. Have a look at this. This is where the electrification would go without any further measures. With the proposal from the European Commission, it would increase to this level, but in actual fact, we'd need to go up here in order to stay on the curve. Regardless, we're looking at some very big changes in a very small time frame. Take the example of e-mobility. Last year, one out of 10 cars had a plug. This year, it's already two out of 10 cars who have a plug. The plan is to phase out the sales of combustion engines already in 14 years from now. In order for this to become a seamless and smooth experience for the customers so they don't miss the old, is that we have the necessary charging infrastructure for people to charge when they want, where they want. And with 40 million cars on the road, it goes without saying that we need much more charging. 10 years ago, we had 2,000 charging points in Europe. Today, we have 200,000. By 2030, we need three and a half million. We have a similar development for heat pumps. Today, we have some 15 million heat pumps in Europe. That figure needs to triple in order for us to get to the 2030 objectives. Doubling, tripling, quadrupling, Millions, billions, gazillions. I know this can sound a bit overwhelming. And let's be clear, this is not a walk in the park. This is a major industrial transformation. So let us not be intimidated, but let us also not underestimate it. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the millions or the billions. Just think about this. Last year, Apple sold 200 million smartphones, 200 million. So the mass production is not the problem. What this is really about is mustering the necessary determination to come together and deliver on what we've already agreed in terms of targets. It's about removing the obstacles that stand in the way. It's about making it attractive to customers. And it's about getting the rules right once and for all so industry can get going. If we do that, I'm confident we can deliver. So I say, let's do this. 
Let us make the 2020s the electric decade.